Welcome to Anime Expo once again, Toonami Faithful fans. I'm editorial writer CJ Maffers, and here with a guest that we've talked to quite a few times, and one that I always love talking to at conventions, the man, the myth, the legend, Keith Silverstein. No, no myth, no legend, but hi, everybody. How you doing? I hope you're enjoying Anime Expo. Uh, so far, so good. I was here on Thursday, uh, and I had a signing for a few hours, and it was great. We had a really good turnout. Everybody was fantastic, nice. It was so good to meet everyone. So, Were you at the Blizzard Station? I, we'll get to more overall. Were you at the Blizzard Station at the Entertainment Hall? I walked past. I saw the uh, Hanzo statue that they have now, which is beautiful. Trust me, I am like waiting on bated breath for my Torbs, which uh, who knows? I'm sure it'll be like six years. Will he, will he be throwing armor? That's that's the thing that I want to know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just hoping that the turret, it's got to be him and the turret. It's that's that's the only thing I'm like, just make sure the turret's a part of it. It's got to be. But, but one show that was on Toonami and recently and has gone away that we were able to at least, you know, talk about or anything along those kind of lines Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans and now that it's over you can now go through the whole thing the whole process of whatnot and your character survived out of out of out of all of the Gundam characters and you being a veteran of Gundam that has to be something that kind of blew up your mind in a sense of like wow really me I'm the chosen well even more than you probably know so when I first came in uh, the director was Chris Kaysen on that on the first season and uh, when I first came in we had to decide how to even pronounce my name yeah. we knew it was Chad but it's written Chad Chadden, Chad Chaden, and so we actually had this conversation where we said nobody whose last name was Chadden could possibly name their son Chad. <laughs> like no one is that unimaginative. So we decided it, it has to be Chad Chaden. So we established that and then it was kind of a running joke because I had a few lines an episode or every couple of episodes he would just say something small and we thought he was going to die soon and it was no big deal and then by second season he was still in it he started having more lines he got more responsibility in the show we started piloting uh, you know mobile suits and stuff and it just got it got really cool and it was just kind of a running joke for me I would live tweet and mention all the time when he would show up be yeah. because nobody cared was my the reason I was doing it not because this is the first season too this is yeah absolutely yeah. I was like hey it was a great Chad Chaden episode tonight and I would live tweet this stuff just as a joke and Chris would like it and uh, Erica Limbeck was in on the joke other people were in on the joke and they would like that stuff but then there was an episode in second season where when he got hospitalized for those of you who know and uh, it's hilarious because they mentioned his name about 30 times in that episode his full name like to really make sure the audience knew who he was which was like so funny for us because we were all watching and just dying laughing that they mentioned his name so many times is that like uh, the Jojo counter for that episode that was the Jojo counter yes if you were drinking having a shot every single time they said Chad or Chad Chaden throughout the whole series you would have been stone cold sober <laughs> until that one episode and then you would have been drunk on your ass basically <laughs> now another Gundam show that we didn't know was going to be on the block but ended up turning uh, giving Gundam Iron Blood and Orphans a break was Gundam Unicorn and that is definitely one of your more prominent villain roles that I can think of uh, the reincarnation of Char with full frontal very nice name by the way right I'm now just starting to review uh, Right Stuff's uh, Blu-ray home media release. The OVAs are beautiful. I love the way the story is, personally more than the TV cut, just because it felt like with yeah. the TV cut, it interrupted at parts where you're like, yeah. oh, it just didn't feel right. So watching it the way that it was intended, it's just the storytelling, everything just seems so beautiful. And so I'm curious how you felt being able to, not necessarily rep reprise Char, but to be this kind of clone of Char that really y you could flip heads or tails if he was the real one. Well, it wasn't reprising Char. I mean, in the universe, it was a reprisal of Char. For me, it was not because I, I had never voiced Char. I voiced Full Frontal before Char, and I voiced Char Osnabol and Gun in the Origin, right. which um, was after we completely finished with Gundam Unicorn. With a lot of Gundam show, like, because with Unicorn, that was made up in 2010, and then, like, you have all these other, like, you see stuff that happened in the future that was made in, like, the 90s. So it's, like, I understand. Yeah. It's kind of interesting how they're coming back to it. But going back to Full Frontal, like, what did you feel when you were acting? 
acting and when you were kind of like giving this gravitas of the kind of character that he was? Well, I, luckily I had, because I only know so much. The Gundam universe is vast, everybody knows, and everybody knows what it is, but I was one of those peeps that had some toys when I was a kid, had never really seen a series, but knew exact. I knew what it was. I mean, you have to. Uh, it's like Sailor Moon and Gundam. Like, you always know, you're like, I know what that is. Um, so luckily I had uh, Stephanie Shea directing it, as well as Michael Sinter Nicholas, uh, and, and, and they let me know what was what in that series, because it is such a complex plot. Yeah. And you got to know, that we don't get the scripts ahead of time, um, and we really get a description and then we watch our scenes and we don't even see our own scenes in their entirety. It's like the chops, right? And yeah. some of the animation wasn't even finished because they were oh. still finishing the animation while we were doing it. So I mean, that was one of those shows I really uh, needed and appreciated all the help I could get on. Just kind of knowing what's my relationship with this character. Plus, um, with both Char, Osmond, and Full Frontal, they kind of always have some type of ulterior motive, or frequently they do. And uh, so you can't just read the lines necessarily the way they're written and take them at face value. Sometimes you, you mean something else by it. And so it's good to know like when I'm up to something, when I'm not up to something. And you have to have seen the whole script to kind of know what's what's what. So after doing Full Frontal or the, being the voice of him, what was it like then sitting in as Char for Gundam The Origin? I, you know what? I, I, we just had a panel on this the other night. And uh, it was fascinating um, to go back. They're not one and the same. They basically share DNA. But uh, with Full Frontal, he was supposed to be very believably Char, meaning people were like, is that Char? Is that so? That was so fun. I loved how everyone was freaking out when they first saw that too. Right, so exactly. I saw it. Like it was. And they don't, you don't know as the audience until later what the situation is anyway. Sorry for the spoiler. <laughs> Deal with it. You got to see this stuff when it comes out. It already did. It's good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, it was really cool for me to go back. And even though it's not seeing exactly where Full Frontal came from, it's that same DNA. So it's seeing where Char started. And I got to play him from adolescence through adulthood and now I got to really find out where this character came from and what happened to change him in his life what set him on this path because by the time he's full frontal he is 130% focused on his goal um, if anything goes not as planned he just finds it interesting and kind of it's good. okay well how can I make this work for me he's that refined and focused at that point but it was interesting to see when he was more emotional um, to see the choices he made that get that basically get him to that place eventually nice. So I look at them as like alternate universe versions of the same person. Yeah, no, I like that. And it's funny, I just recently picked up uh, Gundam, the, like the first Gundam, like back when it was made in the 80s and stuff. Right, right, right. Listening to Shari, I hear you in it, even though I know it's obviously not you. Was that Steve Bloom or who was no, there? There's a people that played Shari. No, I, I think it was like a Canadian uh, bag of, uh, ocean, because I know uh, Brad Swaley is Amaro for that one. So I think it's around that time. But when I was listening to it, I was like, wow, I don't know if Keith actually might have listened to this before and added like his own personal spin, but a little like same kind of tone with it. Interesting. Uh, I did not. <laughs> no, but I, it's just very interesting to know. So I did not. So either uh, it, we were just playing the same character so there were similarities to it. Um, maybe they cast me because I had uh, some vocal similarities to the original Char. Um, so it could have been that. Uh, it could have been that now that you've heard my voice, you kind of in the back were hearing that a little bit. Not that you weren't hearing the other actor right. as well. No, no, but you, uh, but there, it could be a combination of those things, which is interesting because I know if I, if I know a voice in English, and then I watch uh, an episode in Japanese, I kind of hear whoever that is. You see that with like Bryce Pappenbrook and Matt Mercer with some of their Japanese counterparts, especially when it comes to Attack on Titan and uh, One Piece for some things. Talking about at least Toonami shows, sticking at least with that, Hunter Hunter has reached over 100 episodes on Toonami. How about that accomplishment? Uh, that's crazy. Uh, I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I know it's your therapy session sometimes when you get to be as Hisoka, but how about the dodgeball game, considering we didn't get to talk about that? That was great. Yeah, I very much enjoyed the dodgeball game. I've been very good at watching it, with the exception of the Chimera arc, which I've seen about 60% of. Um, I have most of them uh, recorded at home to catch up, nice. but I, I lost like two or three of them. My daughter or deleted or something happened, and so I was a little, I was a little bummed out because like in the middle I'm like, oh, okay, so I guess the king is born. <laughs> I guess that happened. A proud father moment right there. And I didn't get to see that stuff, so I'm gonna miss a couple of episodes in that arc, unfortunately. And uh, I apologize for everyone. I know I've been really good at live tweeting until this arc, and it, it honestly wasn't because I'm not in the arc. It, I just got kind of busy with cons and family and work and everything and it just got a little harder to do. I will try to use Hisoka's return as an excuse to try to live tweet a little more often. It is difficult. I think I did 
60 plus episodes or so, maybe more than that, 70, 80 episodes I did live tweet, so so I was pretty good. Where, where are the hunters at, right? Yeah, where are my hunters at? <laughs> yeah, look for it. It'll come back. I'll come back. But how much, now that we're getting closer to the end, there's about a little less than a year, maybe a little more, depending on marathons and breaks. Okay, before you finish your question, just don't give me a spoiler for the end. No, what I'm going to ask is, <laughs> how, how have you liked the kind of growth? And I know people might kind of look at that with a weird face, but you kind of see more of Hisoka as the st series goes on, where it comes to, like, he starts off, as you think, is just this typical menacing evil person that's, like, trying to kill people. Right. But you kind of see more of like him working with Gon instead of trying to kill him. He wants to pluck the fruit when it's ripe, and you kind of see yeah. the evolution of his mind and his way of thinking throughout the series. And I'm curious how your thoughts of just watching it kind of unfold and even getting to play it, if you kind of see it as you're reading the lines every now and then, if you kind of see the progression of him as a villain as you go forward. Uh, you know, I don't see him. It's interesting. I know he's a, a villain and what have you, I, but I don't see him so much as a villain as of yet, as far as what we're up to. He's definitely badass. He has. Um, he loves a good fight more than anything. So he will go very far to get that good fight um, and, and wait, you know, for for those to ripen who will be a challenge later. Uh, and he's mysterious. But for me, when he's on camera. I don't. I, I think he's pretty transparent on camera. I think what it is is uh, whatever his mystery is is kind of what he does on his own. Does that make sense? Yeah, like yeah, when yeah. he's not on camera, that's not like what is he doing. The, to me, that's the mystery of him because he's pretty straightforward to me, and I don't think he's changed too much from where we are now. Uh, the perception may, because when you first meet him, yeah. it's just, who's this badass hunter? Like, who is this guy? He's so tough. And then you realize he's not just killing people left and right. And then, there's no reason for him not to team up with Gone. I mean, there is a reason for him to do it. It was just kind of an assumption. So I think the audience goes like, wow, he's teaming up with him. But he never said he wouldn't. He never hated Gone. He never was trying to kill him. Not yet. Not, not yet. <laughs> so all those things uh, are, are yet to show themselves. But it's weird because I see him as very straightforward. The biggest mystery on camera for me that he had was before early on, I think it was Greed Island, he has like an eight hour period where he stands and faces a tree <laughs> before he goes into his, he goes into his bloodlust mode. Right. That's the one thing on camera that, I was, that I'm still, I'm like, what was that? Maybe he saw like Gon's initials in the tree, you know, kind of a lover thing going there. I don't think so. I think, uh, I mean, I realize the outcome of it was that he had this bloodlust and whoever was in his way was gonna get killed right. very quickly. And that's what happened. But I don't know why the eight hours of like standing still by the tree so that that was the only on-camera thing that I'm like what the hell was that about I guess I need to do some investigative reporting on that uh, one quick thing before we get to a, a little bit of overwatch I know a lot of that kind of bleeds in with our fan base sure, I've heard of that. Now, with Jojo part four now confirmed to be yes, coming to tonight Jojo is the new character in overwatch yes <laughs> oh my god I would love that we have a hamster why not stands no, 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 no. But um, considering that you were able to kind of go from full frontal Char to also be Chad, right. we could easily see, you know, whatever. I, I actually don't know what studio dubs uh, JoJo here in the U.S. But it's been Bang Zoom. Oh, Bang Zoom. So I could easily, I could easily see Bang Zoom saying, "Oh, we haven't had Keith in a while since, you know." one of the best characters ever in JoJo, in my opinion. I could easily see you bringing back your voice, maybe in a different way, different cadences, the way that you did before, to then return for part four. Yeah, I could definitely be someone gruffer, older, or younger. I mean, there's definitely plenty of opportunities. And if it's a, an out there character, that, you know, it could be any kind of a dialect or anything, who knows? So I could definitely vary up my voice and get another character. Um, it's it's gonna kind of depend on what they're thinking. Are you what their list is? I'm sure they have a list of people that they, in advance, are like, "Ooh, we'll save this actor for this, that," and maybe I'm on that list, and maybe they just have a lot of great actors that they still want to pull in. I'm happy with Speedwagon. I'd always love more work. It would be great. The JoJo fan base is fantastic. I'd love to come back. That's but. the thing, where it's like it's continuing on. It's been on Toonami for so long. The legacy of it, and of course, being part of the first one, I'm sure you feel at least a little like the grand, not to make you feel old, but the grandfather of JoJo to be like, yes, I was there at the very beginning. I am the grandfather of JoJo. I'll be in, uh, well, how, how many seasons does JoJo go for? We now have five. I'll be in six. Y'all don't know about it yet, but I'll be in six. Grandfather JoJo. Oh, yeah. Part five was just announced today, or yesterday at uh, Anime Expo, which is 
everyone was like, they got a premiere episode. Like, for the dub. No, 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 no. No, for the sub. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's coming out in August, or like August or fall. Okay. And uh, they were able to see part five because we've been waiting for it for so long. That so kind of thing. More, there's more new uh, animation coming. Yeah. Well, I know the manga at least is like as part eight. So right. the, there's quite a bit, but at least now we have part five of the anime. Four is getting a dub, and that's going to be on Tsunami. We're all pretty pumped for it. And to finish this off with yes. Overwatch, the, Overwatch, it's been two years, Keith. Two years since you've been a part of this project. Maybe longer it's with longer the voice. It's longer to me. Yeah. It's longer to me because it, I had recorded and it, it wasn't even in beta yet. And uh, then it went into beta and before it was released, I mean, it, I had a good year on it at least before that. So it's been three years for me to be involved Did, in that. How just amazing has it been to feel that you've been working on a project that has touched so many gamers' lives and now has a pro scene that's one of the more successful pro scenes in the country right yeah. now? with Overwatch League. How, how does it feel knowing that you're just there? That, like, your voice is in this world and has touched so many people. It is, uh, it's amazing. It is hard to fathom, uh, in a sense. It's easy to take a moment and stop. And I do that frequently. I take a moment at an interview or when I'm signing or when I meet a fan or whatever, and I stop and go, this is, like, this is unbelievable. How did I manage to be so lucky, in all honesty? And I very much appreciate it and do not take it for granted. Um, but, it's, but it's hard to, it, it is so humbling that you just can't live in that humbling place all the time. Or you'd be walking around all the time going, I can't believe it. You never get anything done. This is unbelievable. So, um, so it's, a very, it's a very weird thing because you go through your daily life and you don't think about it because you, you got to shop for groceries and you got to take your kids to Disneyland and you got to work other jobs and do whatever, you, the normal grind that you do. And, uh, and then every once in a while you pause and you go... <laughs> What yeah, is know. going on? It's like, it's kidding. amazing. It blows my mind even, too, considering how much I've immersed into the Overwatch community. It's like, the voice of Toy Bruin, right here. Are you excited about the potential rework and things of uh, the rumor mill with that? Well, I think they've announced a rework because they, they haven't told me personally. So the only reason I've heard about it is because I believe they've announced it. Uh, they, I think they announced a list of like two or three characters right. they wanted to rework. They put uh, Torbs on the back burner for a little while, and I think that's now he's next up at bat. And I'm... I'm really excited. I'm a Torb main, and when I say main, I'm, there's not even a word for it, because main means that's who you usually go to. There should be a word for who you always go to, because I don't attack defense. I don't care. I don't even play the modes where it's like random, because I'm like, nah. You just, you just need to throw your armor, the whole thing. Absolutely. I, I will say, I find it funny how much like your friends and in your community, where you get to joke about throwing things at them, and it's like, oh, it's just armor packs. It's OK. I'm trying to help you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wish I could do that in the real world. <laughs> I wish I could walk around and anytime somebody tripped or hurt themselves, I could just be armor here and I could just throw it out to them. I mean, I wish. Uh, that would be, I, I would definitely use some of the, definitely. Keith, thank you so much for taking the time. I mean, this is such a busy convention for everyone, yeah. things like that. Being able to set aside some time to talk with us and to Tsunami Faithfuls out there, it, it's such an honor and a pleasure to do it once again. Nice. Well, thank you so much for having me. I, I appreciate Thanks. it. It's honestly, it's amazing. Anybody cares at all what I have to say. That's just where I'm at, but, but I, I'm honored to be a part of this and uh, and Toonami's been great so uh, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that more more of my shows get on there because I really like that community oh, yeah. vibe of like live tweeting with stuff and if it's one of my shows it's a good excuse because if I can watch it I try to mm -hmm. it helps me uh, connect with the fans a little better afterwards oh I know the fans appreciate it trust me they, they, they do different it's very different to record it and walk away and then four or five six months pass before it comes out yeah. it's a whole different experience to watch it and then to watch it with immediate response from the fans so uh, uh, that the whole Toonami scene I've been a fan of and I very much enjoyed being a part of so so that's been that's thank you to all to all the tsunami faithful out there well thank you and thank you for watching everyone let me go peace